again, it's it's, it's back to this whole with the screwdriver thing. Uh, if if the problem is a is a complex problem, then you can use the agile tool for it. Just like if it's a screw, you use the screwdriver. But there are also other problems out in the world, and you need to make sure that that you know the problems and you know what is the right tool for for the right problem. There, if, if you can see it's a nail, then then use the hammer instead of trying to use the screwdriver. Yeah. What will you do to unlock innovation? In today's fast-paced world, innovation might not be enough. Tomorrow's pioneers of change will need to be agile, able to adapt, and committed like never before. Your host, Santa Vending, invites you to listen in and join business leaders from around the world as they share their visions for success in our future business challenges. Welcome to Mind Innovation. I'm your host, Sana Vinding, and I'm always excited to learn. And in today's podcast, we're going to talk about don't just go agile, be smart about becoming agile. I want to welcome Mark Adler Masson. He's a co-founder and partner at Aspire Innovation. He's a strong change leader and entrepreneur skilled in strategic PMO implementation and product development. So great to have you here, Mark. You know, we've been rescheduling a couple of times, so but finally we are actually make, making it today. So so welcome. Excellent. I'm happy to be here and uh, happy that we finally made it, right? Yeah, it is it is going to happen. So, um, yeah, so let's let's define, or I'll ask you, you know, can you can you define agile and, and what does it actually mean when you say agile transformation? I think that can help, you know, our whole conversation today. Oh, definitely, definitely. I think um, agile to me, I've been on the uh, on, on this agile journey for, for quite a few years now. Um, uh, the first step I did into agile is, is more than 15 years ago already, um, where we had a, a quite big program uh, that was in dire need of, of, of saving, to be honest. And um, we, we, we looked at agile as one of the measures of, 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 of cutting some of the, um, the overhead and, and keeping it simple and, and really getting this program back on track. A big program software electronics uh, primarily yeah. and we succeeded with that and and i've basically been been sold on the whole agile way of working and, and thinking um, ever since then but along the way have also uh, encountered some of the challenges that that agile can can bring and, and also found out that it's definitely not a silver bullet that, that fixes all your problems right no 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 so what about so you know there's a lot of principle what that goes in when you when you start implementing or using some of the agile tools and methodologies but there's a, as you just mentioned there's some frustrations as well so what what kind of frustrations and we'll get take the positive as well <laughs> but but let's start with the frustrations first so what, what kind of frustration have you seen because i'm pretty sure when somebody goes in right they just want to say oh we just want to you know all success success but there is another side sometimes as well that you or hurdles you have to go get over and then it it, it starts to, to shine more so what what kind of frustrations have you seen oh, oh definitely definitely yeah i think uh, one of the frustrations i have seen and it's basically also one that that i have been feeling on my own uh, body myself so yeah. to say yeah. is really this that you have you have you, you see this great uh, way of working this great tool set uh, these great methods uh, of working here yeah. and when you see it work in, in in one corner you see it working in one area here you really want to use it as, as broadly as possible i'm also seeing many companies do that um, either they have heard about it uh, agile has become a hype and they've yeah. heard about it and say we also want to do that uh, we also want to be faster and deliver yeah. better quality and all of that so uh, let's just go agile uh, all yeah. in on, on on this whole agile thing and and, and, and go do it um, and i think that that the frustrations that really come with that is that it's uh, doing this blindly uh, is not necessarily the the right way. Yeah. Um, it, it is a, a tool uh, like a screwdriver. You can say it's a very simplified version, right? But the screwdriver is extremely good at, at screws, uh, but it's not necessarily the best hammer you can uh, you can get. And I see I've seen a lot of frustrations like that with people that really try to apply yeah. it to everything where it 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 it, it it's uh, I believe have uh, a domain where it where it's yeah. more applicable. Yeah. So. I, I think there's still somebody out there that will say, yeah, agile, right? And they connect that to the software world. Um, but you're also connecting it to, to the hardware development, right? So how, how do you fit that together? Yeah, and I think that that's really a development that has happened over the last, uh, the last years. Um, it, it, as, as you say, it started in the software world uh, and, yeah. and broadened out also into electronics, where it's also been used for quite some, quite some years. And yes, the last years have really seen it move into uh, both to, to hardware, the mechanical world, but also into to other areas. I've heard about uh, finance functions that want to go agile, uh, HR functions that wanted to become more agile. So yeah. it is really becoming a, 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 
um, a, a way of working, a way of thinking. It, it's really broadening out, and people are trying to apply some of these best practicals uh, a lot broader. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's also where it, it seems like it's 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 harder to apply. Uh, it seems easier to apply in the software world, indeed, in the IT world. Yeah. No, totally, totally get it. So, so you are you're touching on a transformation within an organization or within a company. So, if the benefits of of doing this, um, it, and you just touched a little bit as well, right? You know, being faster, better quality. Um, what, what are some of the other benefits that that you see? Because you you see a lot of you work with a lot of different clients. Oh, definitely, oh, definitely. Um, I think that uh, a lot of the agile um, principles they really cater for the. Uh, um, they, they really cater to, to the good old um, practice of leadership, right? It, it's about the team. It's about putting the team in, in, in the center. Um, it's about empowering the team and, and making the, the experts do what uh, they do best, cutting yeah, down yeah. on the micromanagement uh, and, and really focusing a lot more on, on, on people, right? Uh, and even yeah. the Agile Manifesto says it in the very first line, uh, which is yeah, 21 years old now, right? It's uh, individuals <laughs> and interaction are more important than processes and tools. And uh, yeah. I mean, it's, people tend to, to love that, right? That they get more freedom to, uh, to, to do what, what, what actually brings value. Yeah. So if you're going in and a, and a company's claim and saying, oh, we're like an Agile organization, um, if you took like your X-ray classes on, <laughs> what what will you look after or look for to say, yeah, they're right, they are actually an agile organization, or you will say, no, they just, you know, they they think they are, but actually they're not. Uh, actually, empowerment would be one of the first questions uh, that I'm asking. Uh, I'd be, be be looking at their governance and yeah, I, yeah. have they cut significantly down on, on their governance? Have they empowered their teams uh, to to do what gives value? Um, and, and indeed, um, I think there is a difference there also in the understandings of Agile. I mean, this, this, is, this is also my understanding of Agile, that it's the principles that, that are at the center of it, uh, that's yeah. the key value. Um, but I also think that, that many companies have become uh, very rigidly Agile, so to say, which kind of sounds like a contradiction, but they have really uh, looked at, at, at some of the, the, the models that are out there, like SAFE, like Scrum, uh, yeah. and, and, and those and then just focus on implementing those models and, and, and really uh, trying to master these models and, and rolling them out as, uh, as, as broad as they can. Um, and I, I kind of think that, that many of them have become slaves to that. Um, uh, it has become more about following this model, following the, the, the processes of, of, of that, than, yeah. it has, than it has been about um, you know, uh, enabling the people and, and focus on what the individuals actually need uh, in the everyday. Yeah. So, so, so some of them actually start on the wrong foot. That's, that's what you're saying, right? I think it's tough to say if they're starting on the wrong foot or the right foot, because but, again, uh, that way of, of working might be very valuable to, to some companies. Um, yeah. But again, it, I think it depends on what you're really seeking. Uh, and I think it, it, it really goes back to if, if companies want to be, to be agile in, 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 in definition of uh, what Agile originally was, that it is about the, the people. Or if they want to look at um, uh, about building newer uh, processes um, that, that fits into, into that company there, if they want to replace the, the water file style with a, a very, very disciplined uh, iterative style, um, yeah. um, which is kind of the, I see these two camps, so to say, of, of this people that, that, that call themselves Agile, company that's called, uh, that call themselves Agile. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to hear if you had an example you can share, right, where you, you went in um, and the company is struggling on, on you know, becoming Agile um, and, and how, you know, how, you know, what did you do or what did you see and, and actually help that organization to change so it, it actually f turned out to be a success? Exactly. And, and I have a, an experience uh, from myself, uh, from a previous company that, that, that was in myself, yeah. where we actually, um, we, we, I had all of these great experiences here with Agile. And I honestly believe that it was all about just going all in on Scrum and just broadening it out as, 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 as broad as we really could. Uh, and the company here I came into, um, we, we wanted to expand that to also to, to production, to, to procurement, uh, to really going agile uh, across the whole scale because if, if it worked in the software world yeah. uh, it had to be even better if it became bigger right um, yeah. and that did not go very well uh, the development part of it went very very well but when it really came to to, oper uh, 
to to making it operational to to really get out in in, in the end uh, where we were talking production the principles did not apply there at all and, yeah. and i would say it, it failed miserably uh, out yeah. in that end even uh, i'll admit that <laughs> uh, it, it it did not do very well uh, out in, in in that end of it there because uh, the production world were not um it, it would not fit into that world at all um, this whole way of working iteratively uh, would not really work with, with suppliers. Suppliers would have a long lead time on things. And, and, yeah. and in those 8, 10, 12 weeks where you're waiting for, for parts to come home, where you're waiting for, uh, for production equipment to be made, um, yeah. what, does it mean? what does it matter if you have two or three iterations? It's, it's, it, just, it, it just doesn't fit together um, no. that way of working. So, yeah. so that, that was definitely a challenge. Also, trying to... Um, some of those things that are a little bit uh, harder to change it's very very hard to change production equipment uh on, on a on a monthly basis or a two to four week basis right yeah and trying to do that trying to make that iterative um was also extremely tough and and and, and of course didn't work um so that was there was some uh, some 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 lessons learned there that uh, that that those ways of working, making things unnecessarily iterative and and <laughs> and, and trying to 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 value change uh, yeah. throughout the, the the product life cycle there, um, yeah. uh, really did not add uh, add value or, or they definitely did not add speed or, or lower the cost either. <laughs> it's, <pretty laughs> like it's not like a cookie a cookie cutter, right? Where you just put it in all over and saying this exactly. is what we're doing and yeah. Um, so and you touched it as well when you were saying it, it's a transformation, right? And I also had when I introduced you, right, to be a change leader. Um, and that that you you need to have a lot of experience um, and you need to be a strong person because it's not everything. It's not just a happy day, uh, especially not when you're standing in, in front of a group where it's not everybody that says, yeah, we're running, you know, are following you as a leader. Um, so what is what are some of your experience here, you know, not convincing, but get, but, but educating, I think that's the right word, right? When we, within a team and actually get everybody on the same side and, and, and saying, this is where we're going. This is the North star um, and, and get them on board and saying, we are changing because it's hard to change. Um, it's, it is. And, and I think everybody just needs to be clear about it. It is hard to change. I think um, there are really two sides of that. I, I think it starts with the right change. Um, and, and I was looking for that for a while after this experience. Yeah, I was looking for, for the explanation why it wouldn't work, uh, in, in, why it would be absolutely fantastic in some domains and why it wouldn't work in, in, in other domains there. Yeah. Uh, I was looking for the answer for that for a while and really defining what is the right change uh, to do. Yeah. Uh, and um, what really opened my eyes there was really Dave Snowden uh, with his Cunevin framework. Um, where he's really talking about these different habitats, these different domains of, of, of tasks that we are, are in every day, where he defines tasks from the very clear ones, uh, the just do it tasks, to the more complicated tasks that require some planning, that require experts, to the complex tasks, where basically the, the, the short version is that that's really where, where Agile uh, thrives, uh, where there's uncertainty, where you cannot necessarily de determine the, uh, the outcomes uh, up front and that that really really opened my eyes to saying that aha agile is is great for this complex world and we can dive more into that of course yeah. but agile is really good for this complex world but there might be other ways that work better in uh, in, in in the other uh, yeah. in the other worlds there in the other domains so that was one of the big things that that really changed them the other thing that 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 i also realized uh, along the way was that uh, if you are really uh, if, if you want to go agile uh, there's really uh, two steps that, that need to be there uh, for it to be a success. First of all, leadership needs to be on board with it. You need to realize that this is not another process change. Yeah, uh, it, It's not like we, 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 we don't just put another process on the shelf uh, and, and then we become magically much better than, than we were before. Like the recipe, we're just doing it, yeah, following. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, that is really this mindset change yeah. that, that, uh, that yeah. leadership needs to, to stop micromanage. We need to empower the people. Um, yeah. we, we need to focus on, on leadership again. Uh, and maybe that also means that we need to get rid of processes. We need to get yeah. rid of yeah. policies and, and, and laws and, and all of the things that we are bounding our people by. Uh, and, and that I think is, is a hard change and management definitely needs to, to be on board with that um, yeah. to, to set people free. Uh, and then also that, that instead of, I think transformation, um, when I hear companies talking about agile transformations, I already think that they're on the wrong path uh, oh. because a transformation, that is something that has a, a clear start 
and uh, a clear end. Uh, yeah. And then you have this gap analysis of what do we need to do from to get from this place to this place here. And I don't think that that becoming agile uh, really works like that. Uh, I think it's much more dynamic. It's a lot yeah. more about uh, the, the values that we want to achieve and also going agile in an agile way. So to say that that it's yeah. not a transformation, it's more an evolution. It's a, it's an organic uh, thing, much more than a, a defined transformation. Yeah. I, yeah, I like that. What what about so? But but I, I want if you, oh, how do I say? So if with with people again, right? Because you can go into a room and you can just see that person with cross arms, right? Saying I'm not doing this. How do you how do you get them to be on the team? Even though you're saying yeah, it's up to the leadership. You know they have a lot of responsibility. But again, when you walk in, um, you you want everybody to 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 be on the same on the same side. How do you convince the ones that don't believe in you to begin with? Indeed, indeed. I think that the people that, that I have encountered, they are also struggling with this, that that they can kind of see that agile doesn't apply to everything. And, you know, we cannot see how, how can we, how, how, how can we do procurement agile? How, how can we iteratively get the stuff home? Yeah. How can we iteratively build our production lines? Those have been the, 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 the main resistances that I have seen in the company yeah. around. And I think it really starts with saying that it, it doesn't mean that everything should be agile. Yeah. Um, and usually when you start uh, talking to these people here and you start talking to them about complexity, I mean, most people uh, are, are usually admitting that that there are these tasks, there are these projects, the initiatives, big programs that are complex and yeah. that they cannot plan 100% up front where we need to be iterative. We need to, to elaborate uh, along the way. They usually admit that uh, because everybody has these kind of uh, tasks. And usually people also admit that we are not really good uh, at, at dealing with those kind of things there. And that's where I think that Agile really comes in as a as an, as potential answer, yeah. uh, as a help at least to, to, to improving on those things there. And usually when, when, when that becomes clear that that these this complex domain here that's that's really what we are trying to focus on with with agile uh, on improving that then usually people gets on board because um that they they are struggling with that and 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 the things that they already have well in control where they have their good sops and and their good processes as far as we're not touching that because you're doing fine there already then that, that usually helps yeah um, I heard about a company, I can't remember who it is right now. They actually had like an award system, if you want to say it and saying, you know, to kill processes, because when you change uh, or you grow um, a company like, oh, you're just adding, right, more processes or more systems and everything else. So at a certain time, you need, you need to, to clear it out or be, get, get more lean, if, if that's the word of, of getting more agile. So they had a whole system saying, you know, let's get rid of some of these processes and then you get an award. Um, and I really like that because I don't think too many, I, I haven't seen too many companies with that approach. Um, so is that, is that something you've seen on your side? I mean, that's a kind of gamification, right? Um, and gamification is always great for for for, for doing change. Um, there can be a little competition, uh, also. You know, who can remove most processes and along those ways. And fully agreed uh, that, that that definitely works. Uh, but I also think that that's a bit further down the road. I mean, we all need to agree that we are playing the same game yeah. um, <laughs> before you can you can get to that. But, but then definitely, yes. Oh, yeah, you need to understand everything, right? And have the full yeah. picture or the helicopter view before you can say we don't need it. Um, yeah. But I just like the approach. We all need to agree yeah. that, that it's a goal to remove processes yeah. before we, 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 we can start to compete about it. And before yeah. it can be fun to, to remove them, we need to, to agree that that is a value yeah. and we need to go yeah. down that route. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and I also think maybe this just trigger, right, the conversation around it. If you highlight somebody saying, hey, do we really need it? that actually opened up and saying now there's a time to to change it or refresh it or make it more simple um i'm not saying that every day or every week they killed a process that's <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> they're there for a reason right um but no what about so you talked you would, about oh yeah you would hope so yes <laughs> I, I, uh, no. I've also seen processes that that's where at least at least the, the reason was uh, was not uh, immediately apparent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Um, you talked about the the complexity. So uh, let's let's go back to that. So how do how do you dive in? Because it can be like a whole mountain, right? That you you need to climb. Um, so so what kind of approach do do you go for? Indeed. 
I think um, I said Dave Snowden's uh, Kunevin uh, model is really, really good for, for talking about complexity, and yeah. especially in this context of where do we want to use uh, use Agile. Uh, and basically, so, so Snowden is dividing the world into to largely four categories. Um, three of them are mostly important uh, or relevant when we talk projects and, and tasks and initiative programs, all of those things there. And basically what he's saying is that those three main ones, there's a domain that is clear. Um, and down there in, in that world, we're having, you know, the tasks that we have every day that are extremely simple. Uh, for example, if I need to tie my shoes, I bend down and I tie my shoes. Yeah. Um, also, if I'm a leader uh, out in the battlefield and I need two trenches stuck, I, told, I tell uh, number 35, you dig the trench uh, over on the right side and, 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 and 87, you dig the trench over on, on the other side. And then they go do it. They come and report back and say, we've dug the trench. Everything is good task is done yeah. you don't need more complexity you don't need more management around that you don't need to you, you don't need to sit down in a in, in a circle and discuss how to do it it's going out there getting it done getting back jobs finished just do it yeah then there are also these um the, the next level up so to say where things are becoming more complicated um if my car sounds funny one morning uh i can i can evaluate that something is wrong but <laughs> i might not necessarily know what it is and I definitely don't know how to fix it, right? <laughs> so what I do is, I, you know, I call an expert. Uh, and if I go to a mechanic that I know is good, um, that he is really an expert of his domain, yeah. then I know that he can use the right equipment. He can put the, you know, he can probe it. He can analyze uh, what is wrong here. He might be able to hear it uh, straight off the bat, right? But he can yeah. definitely, if he gets the right team together, the right equipment, uh, the right processes, and he has the right competence, then he can analyze the problem. And then, you know, he can say, uh, you can pick up your car again in, in the afternoon. Yeah. And then I come back in the afternoon, the car is fixed and I pay a fortune, uh, but everybody is, is relatively happy because the problem has also one. become yeah. fixed. Whereas I, I could never have fixed that problem myself. Yeah. No. So definitely there are these kinds of, of, of tasks here also and projects uh, at work also, right? If you get the right team together uh, that have done it before, if it's yeah. the 10th time we make a variant of the same product, um, if we are selling this the same thing to a new customer and we need to do adaptions to it um, and that, then we can, if we have the right team together, we can probably sit down and analyze it up front, make a plan for it, and then just execute it. Yeah. It might be big. It might be complex. We might need a large team for it. It can be immensely large teams that, that do these things here. But again, if we have the right team together, we can more or less manage it with this uh, plan up front. Yeah. And then basically the point is keep doing that. If these are the kind of jobs that you're looking at projects, then do that. Yeah. But then Snowden also says here, there is this category of, 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 of work that we do that are more complex. Um, and I think the, the archetype of that is, you know, if you plant 10 seeds, you can treat those 10 seeds exactly the same way. You can give them these, the same amount of water, the same amount of, uh, of, uh, of, of vitamins, whatever, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no matter how, 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 how like you treat them, you will never get 10 trees that look exactly the same. You can never determine how these trees will, will turn out, um, no matter how much you try and control all of the parameters, how much you try and control up front. Some of them might even not become anything. You treat yeah. them all the same. You've planted 10 seeds. Two of them might never become anything. And it's impossible to determine up front um, yeah. uh, that that is actually the case. Stock market is another example of that, right? Uh, <laughs> you can analyze as much as you want and things... Yeah. Uh, don't go the way you wanted to anyways, right? <laughs> uh, and, and there is definitely projects like that uh, out in the world as well. When you are launching, like, you want to do a completely new product. You are going into digitalization. You're doing something that you have never tried before as a company. You do not have people on board that have tried it uh, before to a smaller or larger degree. It might be disruption. It might just be uh, some new area, some new uh, invention that you are trying to build onto your existing product, but you've not tried it before. And over there, your experts, they do not longer know how to how to do things. They might even be a little bit in the way because they are very, this is a big risk and, and we are very reluctant to go down this route here. They sit down and they analyze and they analyze and they keep analyzing and they never get done analyzing. Uh, eventually you yeah. force them to come out with a plan, but the plan has so much buffer in it that, that the project will never finish in time uh, yeah. before the, the company doesn't exist anymore. And, and over there, right, in this complex world here, that is where um, the, the whole agile ways of working uh, really uh, come in, because over here, so you, you do not really know what the right way to do it is. So you might just want to do some experiments, try some things, uh, try some things out, 
Uh, yeah. Small iteration, yeah. two, three, four weeks, whatever is, is relevant there. Try something out, see how it goes. If it didn't go the right way, you discard the experiment and you start going another way until you you start to to find uh, a way that works in, in this new world. Yeah. So really, yeah. it's a different way uh, that is required to solve the problem over here um, than in the, uh, the the other domains there. So I think that's that's really a strong way of, of, of looking, say, when you have these complex problems, that's when you need to, to apply these agile ways of working. That's where you really get the, uh, the value from. Yeah, that's a lot of benefit there. So the, um, and you touch again, right, because it's all the iteration as well. How do you capture the knowledge if it's a success or if it's a, just a learning or if it's a failure? And then it's better just to say a learning, right? It's not a failure. You learned that it didn't work or you learned you couldn't use that, that route uh, to, to get there. So how do you capture the knowledge and share it? Because in a bigger company, the knowledge sharing is, is like key to success. Exactly, exactly. And again, here um, I think there are there are two learnings that 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 are important to to keep in mind here. One is the learning of the team, and I think it's important there to have the team on board because, again, it's 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 all about how you learn. Uh, if you read something, um, you might not be as inclined to just learn it as if you have lived it and if you have yeah. done it. Uh, it's all these the different many different ways you get the learning in it works yeah. but the team itself the team that has lived it um they learn it by 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 doing it so to say but it's important for the team to constantly uh, reflect of course and, and therefore i mean it's, it's it's also part of scrum that you constantly reflect after each iteration you sit yeah. down and reflect on the way you're working i think that is uh probably the, the most important part of of, of 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 that world there as well you need to have a, a learning loop uh, in, in everything you do, um, not just in, in these iterations that you build in, uh, in in a Scrum or Safe method or something like that, but really with with everything you do. When when you are when you have a workshop uh, about a thing you have never done before, um, evaluate along way, uh, along the way in the workshop as well. Are, are we doing the right thing? Uh, are we going down the right path? Uh, should we should we rethink it if it's if it's going off track? All of those things are, are okay. So this constant reflection. Yeah. Um, yeah. not just monthly, but, but really daily or, or, or frequently during the day is, is really important. In, in but keep, keep asking the right question and keep listening yeah. to, to exactly. the or just keep asking questions because yeah. you don't, you don't, you, you don't necessarily know what the right questions are. Yeah. And, and that, I think that's the most, that's probably the most important because people are many times afraid to ask questions if they don't know what the right question is. And I think a learning is also about asking the wrong questions that are wrong yeah. questions. Yeah. But just making sure that I don't understand this. Um, what are we doing here? And it's so funny when, when one person asks that question there, I don't understand what we're doing. Then people are looking at the person saying, I'm so happy you say that because right. I also did. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it opens up because it, it's also, it's vulnerable, right? To sit there in a the room and saying, I don't understand it. Uh, right. But then when somebody is saying, hey, could you explain it again or use some different words? Um, it's helping the whole team. I also think when, when somebody is asking or you, you're explaining something, you all listen and you understand it in your own way. Um, and it's important to make sure that you all are on the same page and understand it in the same way. So it's, it's good questions just to go over it again. Yeah. And I mean, doing these things here, learning, it, it can be very simple because if, if, we're in a, if we're in a workshop, you can just ask the question in the room, guys, um, are we on the right path? Um, yeah. Where are we at, right? You you can do so a, a quick benchmark there. You can do that extremely quickly. It does not need yeah. to be a, a two-hour uh, retrospective uh, evaluation session or something along those lines. Yeah. It keeps it simple, right? It's yeah. uh, are we are we on the right path, guys? Uh, uh, <laughs> where, where are we, right? And then it it can be done in seconds rather than than than, than hours, right? So yeah, good. Um, I want to look into to the future a little bit. So if, if you know, we have like a listener right now that's an agile leader, what will you recommend this person, you know, looking ahead, if it's five or 10 years, what kind of skills or what should this leader, you know, look for to make sure that they're still growing in their position? I think that we are getting a lot more focus on uh, on, on people leadership again. Uh, so so shifting the 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 the, the um, the focus away from management, uh, um, uh, OKRs and KPIs and, and those things there, uh, shifting away from processes and also focusing on, on the leadership skills, the people skills, uh, all of the soft skills. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that is, that is really, really valuable. And I would say at a, at a minimum, um, uh, I would say that, that good, 
whether it's it's project management, project leadership, uh, or, or it's any other kind of, of of team leadership, I think that as a leader you need to be at least 50-50 focused on uh, on both management and uh, and leadership. There, um, I think that would be a good place to. Uh, that's always what I encourage leaders to do: to take that look at themselves and say, "What, what, what, what are you? What? How, how is your scale looking here? Is tipping too much in, in, in one direction or the other?" That's I think that's a good place to to start. So uh, so having a look at that and and I mean that's nothing new with leadership. Have we've we've talked leadership for many many years and there's a lot of good material out there. Um, it, it's not difficult to to get better at leadership. Let's let's put it like that. Yeah. I think that's that's a great place to start. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I also think about um, uh, th this with the learning, as we've already talked about, it's, it's very, very important. Uh, admit that you don't know everything, uh, that it's okay to learn, that we learn together. Uh, yeah. In this complex world here, um, uh, th there is no such thing as, 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 as failure, um, whereas failure can be extremely bad over in, in the simple world because that's a sign that you do not know what you're doing. Over in the complex world, um, um, failure is, is something that, that, that happens daily. So, so learning that and, 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 and being okay with that we, we learn all the time, uh, I think that's, that's extremely important. And keeping it simple, don't yeah. overdo yeah. it uh, no. as well. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree here. Um, okay, then we, we looked ahead. So if we look, you know, 10 years back and you, you know, looked at yourself now because you know, you know so much now that you didn't know 10 years ago. So what kind of advice will you then give yourself if you look back for 10 years? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know we were like traveling in time, right? <laughs> exactly, that's from one end to the other. Uh, <laughs> I think that... Um, if I look at myself 10 years ago, I think the, the, the best advice I would give myself was to um, to focus less on the process and, and focus a lot more on, on the principles and uh, and not trying to, I, I think what we basically, the, the, what we're talking about today, right? don't just go agile. It, it's, yeah. about, uh, it's about being agile and, and looking at this agile thing, where, where does it fit? Yeah. Um, Again, it's, it's it's back to this whole with the screwdriver thing. Uh, if if the problem is a is a complex problem, then you can use the agile tool for it. Just like if it's a screw, you use the screwdriver. But there are also other problems out in the world, and you need to make sure that that you know the problems and you know what is the right tool for for the right problem there. And if if you can see it's a nail, then then use the hammer instead of trying to use the screwdriver yeah. for it. I mean, it also works at home to use the screwdriver for the for, for, for the for the nails, right? We've all done that, uh, but but the hammer is still better. Uh, we've all been there, yeah. No, no. great. Um, if somebody wants to reach out to you, uh, some of the listeners, right? How where can they find them? Find you and, and get in contact with you? Oh, they, they'd be very welcome to. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we can post uh, email addresses and LinkedIn and, and and phone and all of that. Always happy to uh, to to have a discussion over a cup of coffee uh, uh, about agile, about uh, project management, the portfolio management, product development, uh, uh, those things there. So really, uh, all those ways, uh, LinkedIn, um, yeah, uh, yeah, email, phone, uh, whatever. As, um, I should be available oh, for that. Okay, I'll I'll make sure to to put it on the uh, on the website on the mindinnovation.com and also on the show notes. So everybody can contact you so mark thank you so much for being on today i think you know like you just said before right be agile i think that's just that's that's the whole main theme here um and and i also say you know that what you said like learn together right ask the questions and and be okay with the failures um and it sounds easier sometimes but it is okay to fail <laughs> so thank so, you it's so, so much to talk about yeah. here right? <laughs> <laughs> it is it's easy to talk about but to do it no but thank you so much it was a, i really enjoyed our conversation today excellent thanks for having me and uh as we finally made it i'm uh, happy that we did <laughs> awesome if you enjoy this podcast, maybe you'd like to hear more, please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure also to check out our website, mindtheinnovation.com. And remember, stay curious and keep learning. <laughs>